anyway, so we are still in the second week of our series, No Filter, and uh, napaganda po ng uh, preaching ni, ni Jake last, last week. Ano? I was just so blessed. And uh, yan po ang layunin, isa sa mga layunin din natin sa ating uh, church that we, 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 ano, we believe in the next generation. No? Sabi nga, uh, the, the campuses, the next generation, yun yung stewardship, na yun yung calling ng church natin, ng movement natin. And uh, alam naman natin ngayon, sa social media, ang daming mga para-paraan, no? ng mga pam, ano to, pampa, ko alam kung pampasikat or pampakwela lang na, 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 na nakikita natin sa generation na to. Isa yon isa doon is yung tinatawag nating app. Nasubukan nyo ba yung app na nagpapatanda sa'yo? Anong tawag doon? Yun, face app. Okay, so sinubukan ko po. Sinubukan ko. Okay. <laughs> Kilala niyo naman to, di ba? Pastor Ray, no? Si Pastor Ray. At uh, sinubukan kasi wala siya ngayon, so lolokoy natin siya. Okay? Sinubukan ko po sa kanya at nagulat ako, no, na hindi naman natin may pagkakaila na gwapo si Pastor Ray, di ba? So nagulat ako sa itsura niya in the future. Tapos sobrang sabi ko, grabe parang nakaka-insecure yung itsura niya in the future, no? Parang Alam mo 'yon? Pero siyempre, magpapatalo ba ako? Okay. So, hindi naman po. Ngayon, huwag niyo lang sabihin kay Pastor Ray, baka ma, alam, ma-offend siya kung, kung i-compare kung ano yung itsura ko in the future. Ano. So, atin-atin na lang to. And I, I, I was amazed also sa naging itsura ko in the future. No? Parang, parang wow! <laughs> parang, yeah, okay! Actually, may nagsabi sa akin dati na nasa kid church pa ako, Uh, teacher, teacher, you look like an actor. Sabi ko, wow, sino yun? You look like Jim Carrey. Hindi yeah. <laughs> ko alam kung... Mm, Actually, kinalimutan ko na kung sino siya. No, yung batang yun. But uh, as we go through our, through our lives, there will be perceptions about us. Tama? Yung katabi mo, may perception ka dyan. And minsan, ang, siguro ang nagiging problema or challenge is that we tend to get those perceptions about us and we make our identity out of it. We make our identity out of it. And as we go through this series, this is actually the second week of this series, the last week. As we look at no filter, pag sinabi mo ang kasi ngayong no filter, ito yung uh, magpipicture ka, di ba? Tapos uh, ipapakita mo na hindi mo niritoke. Tama? Kasi most of the time, niritoke natin. Pero kahit nga sabihin natin no filter, ang gagawin natin, pipicture tayo, ay hindi maganda. Picture ulit. Hanggang sa pinaka isang daan mo ng picture, ay ayo ayo na. Pipiliin mo talaga tapos sasabihin mo no filter. No? But another another way of saying no filter is that there is also a place na sasabihin natin sa mga tao, no filter. Receive me as I am. Ganito ako eh. Tanggapin mo kung sino ako. And gusto natin 'yon, right? Kasi ayo natin ng Yung tinatag natin nung panahon ko, kasi hindi no filter nung panahon ko, no plastic. No? ay natin mag- makipagplastikan. So tanggapin mo kung sino ako. And sometimes, dumarating tayo doon na, sino nga ba tayo? Ano nga ba ang identity natin? And last week, Jake talked about that. And today, we're also going to continue. Uh, to continue. Last week, identity ngayon, purpose. Who am I? Isa sa mga importanteng tanong na tinatanong natin sa buhay natin, sa sarili natin as we grow. Isa rin is, what am I here for? Identity and purpose. Magkaakibat po to. At kailangan nating masagot to kasi ang sagot dito, kung sino ang source ng identity mo at ng purpose mo, doon mo ibibuild yung buhay mo. Kinanta natin kanina, build my life. Pero tingnan mo yung, yung buhay mo, saan mo talaga binibuild yan? Kung saan yung source ng identity at purpose mo. Kung ang source ng identity at purpose mo, trabaho, ibibuild mo dun. Kung ang source ng identity at purpose mo, relationship, ibibuild mo dun. Diba? Kaya, nga, kaya nga, kahit hindi pa kayo mag, mag-asawa, ibibuild mo dun. Tapos pag iniwan ka, why does the sun keep on shining? Ganun ang, ang peg natin. Bakit? Kasi binild mo ang buhay mo dun. 
And as Christians, we need to understand this is very important. Not just for the next generation. Dahil ang question na to, who am I, what am I here for, it transcends age. Hindi lamang ang mga bata, ang next generation ang nagtatanong nito. At kailang sumagot nito. Pati yung now generation, ika nga, yung older generation. Tayo rin, kailangan natin sagutin to. Kasi kung anong sagot natin dito, yun yung ipapasa natin sa next generation. Who am I? What am I here for? What are we living for? Kasi nga, kung sino ang source, or kung ano ang source, kung ano yung magsasabi sa'yo, that's your identity. This is where you get your identity and purpose. You build your life around that. So, what are we living for? A friend of mine said this. He said, the two most important days in your life are the day when you were born and the day you find out why. My friend Mark said that a long time ago. A long time ago, okay? So, nung nasa Iloilo ako, akala ko si Mark Twin siya. Ba't mag-isa lang siya? Yung pala iba, okay? Mark Twain, okay? Uh, author po siya and also a, uh, a political activist nung, nung time niya. And that's what we want to look at again. Identity and purpose. We want to build, build our lives right. We want to build, we want to re- receive who we are and why are we here. What are we to live for according to the Word of God. So if you have your Bibles with you, please open it. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 to 10. Yung, mapansin nyo, yung iba, ito rin yung binasa natin last week. 4 and 5 tayo last week. 1 to 5, okay? So let me read that. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 10. The wo- now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a youth. For to all whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and bring down and to break down to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. And God, we ask that our our eyes and our minds, our hearts will be open to receive your truth. Bless the preaching of your word, Lord God, and may may it draw us to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Who has the right to define your purpose? Most of the time, in this generation, no? Okay, punta muna tayo sa generation ko. Nung generation namin, who has the right to define your purpose? It is the people outside. Yun sinasabi ni Jake last week. Outside filter. It is your, your community, your family, your church, your religion. Sila na magsasabi kung ano yung purpose mo. At ang gagawin mo, para you would feel worth and you would feel that you are not insignificant, that you have meaning, you will sacrifice yourself for what they say, kung ano yung sinasabi nila. Pero sa generation ngayon, usually, ang sasabi nila, I define my own purpose. Ako magsasabi kung para saan at kung para kanino ako. Yun naman ang sinasabi ni Jake last week na internal naman yung filter mo. Na kayo ang makibagay sa akin. di ba? That's the modern day. Pero both of them, pag tiningnan mo, it's actually not livable. Hindi siya. Because kahit, kahit dito sabihin mo na, hindi ako yung masusunod. Wala akong alam. Parang yung kaibigan namin last week, di ba? I don't care what people say. Remember our friend, Elsa? Remember yung sinabi niya? Di ba meron siyang 
tag. Ano ba yung sino ba ako? Ano ba yung purpose ko? Yung sinasabi nila, be the good girl you always have to be? Or, I don't care what they say. Ganun ba? Pero kung tutuusin, kahit yun yung, yung ano mo, yung take mo sa buhay mo, it's not even every area of your life that you do that. You, because you do care. Hindi pwedeng I don't care. Totoo. Hindi mo pwedeng pumunta ka sa, sa CBTL at mag-order ka ng yung burger, di ba? Alam nyo na nangyari, di ba? Hindi pa, okay. Yung iba, sige. Jollibee na lang, okay. Hindi pwedeng pumunta ka sa Jollibee at mag-order ka at pagbayaran na. I don't care. Eh, ayoko magbayad. Kayo ang makibagay sa akin. You don't do that. So, pansin nyo, sa mga bagay lang na feeling natin, basta ah, ganito ako, bahala kayo sa buhay nyo. Pero sa totoo lang, sa lahat ng area ng buhay mo, hindi mo pwedeng gawin yun. Hindi pwede. Because time will come, you will care. Even Elsa cared. Kailan? Sabi niya, let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. O siya, siya, di ba? But when the cold bothered her, Sister, who was also my friend. When the cold bothered her sister, anong ginawa niya? She cared. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin that you don't care. That is a life that is unlivable. But the life also here, na kung anong sabihin nila, yan ka. Very indistable yan. ba? Kasi kung sino lang yung strong voice. Ngayon, Teenager ka, guess what kung sino yung strong voice sa'yo? Barkada mo. Pierce mo. No? Pag lahat ng pierce mo, K-pop? K-pop ka rin. <laughs> ba? Kung lahat ng French mo, emo? Emo ka rin. Pag hindi, pag dinala ka na yung sa ibang lugar at hindi na yung mga friends mo, iba na yung mga friends mo, kung ano sila, ganun ka rin. Hindi rin siya livable. Walang stability doon. Kaya kailangan maintindihan natin ang pinaka-source na kailangan makuha natin ang identity at purpose natin. Someone or something, but in our case, it's someone who is unshakable. Sabihin nyo, unshakable. Someone who is unshakable. And so, let's look at what happened to Jeremiah in chapter 1, verse 4. The word of the Lord came to me. The word of the Lord. Tandaan nyo yan. The word of the Lord. Okay? Tandaan nyo, tandaan nyo. Mamaya na kayo matulog. Tandaan nyo muna to. The word of the Lord. Okay? Okay, gising-gising muna. Yung iba talagang, you know, yung iba dito talagang I commend you kasi yung iba kitang-kita ko nilalabanan nyo eh. Ganun kayo eh. Diba? As, alam ko nila, naintindihan ko kayo. Kasi yung iba, alam ko lang na kahit medyo natalo na, talagang lumalaban pa rin kasi Pag, may, pag umiingay, gumaganong ka But anyway, the word of the Lord. Not the word of the pastor. Not an idea of the church. Or community. Or kung ano-ano man, it is God's word. Amen? So the word of the Lord came to me. Grabe, si God yung nag-initiate. Si God yung nag-hold out ng kamay niya. Hindi lang kay Jeremiah, pero sa ating lahat. Si God ang nag The word of the Lord came to me. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. This is what Jake spoke about last week. And give us, gives us a picture that only our Creator can define who we are. Only your Creator will define who you are. Kaya, if you don't believe in a creator, you are lost. Kasi sino ang magde-define kung sino ka? Ikaw? Sila? E eh, ikaw nga, hindi ka rin stable eh. Pansinin mo, yung mga 35 years old na ngayon, or mga 25, sino mga 25 years old dito? Okay, okay. yung mga 25 years old ngayon, when you look back to your 15-year-old self, di ba masasabi mo na parang, Medyo may pagka-engineer ako doon ah. Yung mga engot, may mga ganun. Medyo yung mga decision ko parang hmm. Yung mga pinapaniwalaan ko parang hmm. 
pag 35 ka na and you look back to your 25-year-old self, parang, oh, yan ba yung tingin ko sa sarili ko dati? Yan ba yung buhok ko? Yan ba yung mga post ko? Di ba? Pag 45 ka na and you look back to your 35-year-old self, parang sabihin mo na, ah, hindi, hindi naman ako ganun ka. Can I say that word? No, I cannot say the word. <laughs> hindi naman ako ganun kagrabe nung, alam mo yun, but here's the thing. Every time you, your future self will look to your present self, you will realize, hindi pala ikaw ang magandang standard. Kasi pati ikaw, pabago-bago ka nang iniisip. Minsan nga, hindi mo maintindihan sarili mo eh. Di ba? So only your creator can define you. Who you are. Ganun siya. Let God define who you are. Because He's the one who knows best. The picture is that you and I were formed. God knows us. God consecrated us. God appointed us. What does that mean for us? It means that intentional si God. Nung ginawa ka ni God, hindi siya nag, alam mo yun, sabi niya na, sige, gumawa tayo ng tao. Sige, assembly line. Tapos nandun ka na, hindi ganun. God thought of you. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Tingnan mo yung itsura yan. Di ba parang pinag-isipan talaga? Ang iba sa inyo ayaw mag-agree. No? Pero pinag-isipan yan. Intentional yan. Personal yan. Personal yan. Si God, hindi lang siya yung parang, ayo nga pala si Rev, gawin natin. Sige, sige, sige. Sige na, gawin nyo na yan. Hindi. Ang picture nito, God Himself is the one who created me. God Himself took effort, ika nga, to create me. Pinlano ako ng Panginoon. Hindi ako aksidente. Pansin nyo ha, di ba? Pero usapan na natin last week yan. Oo, nire-review ko lang. Purposeful ka. You're not just a face in the assembly hall. You're not just a number in Victory Fort. How many people are already attending Victory Fort? Around 17,000. You're not just one of those numbers. God has a purpose for you. And as for Jeremiah, ang purpose sa kanya ni God is to be a prophet to the nation. Ang calling ni God is to be a prophet to the nation. Okay? God called Jeremiah to be a prophet to the nation. Now, hindi tayo lahat magiging prophet to the nation, tama? Iba-iba tayo ng calling. Si David, ang calling niya to be a king. Si Jeremiah to be a prophet. Pero meron silang something in common na tayo rin has something in common with them. And what is that? That God is calling us because God has a message to the world. God has a message to the world. So in effect, in effect, para din pala tayong si Jeremiah. Because God has called us to preach His message. Ang message ni Jeremiah dati sa, 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 sa world is this, that people should repent. Turn away from their wicked ways and repent. Return to, return to God. If not, judgment is coming. As a matter of fact, pag binasa mo yung Jeremiah, hindi siya ganun ka-successful. Bakit? Kasi hindi lahat, konting-konti ang naniwala sa kanya. Konting-konti. Kung sa panahon ngayon, nag plant si Jeremiah ng, ng church, walang 17,000 yung pumunta. Baka sampu lang. At baka sabihin natin, ayo, hindi successful kasi konti lang yung pumunta. But the success of Jeremiah, his worth is not based on the quality of his work. His worth is based on the calling of his God. Amen? Si Minsan, you know, uh, well, ako lang example, as a pastor minsan, you know, there are preachings na I feel like, wow, ang galing. There are preachings na I feel like, ano mo yung parang B-movie. Alam mo yung parang flop. And minsan, if I base my worth on how well I preach, ganit, ganit yung itsura ko. Pag maganda yung, ano, yung week ko, parang, <laughs> pag feeling ko hindi, so para ako magiging, alam mo yun, hindi mo, walang stability. 
But my worth and my purpose is based on God's calling. And my hope is this, your worth and purpose is based on God's calling for you. Are you aiming for promotion? Hindi ka pa na po promote? You are worth it. Na promote ka? Bless you. Are you aiming for valedictorian? Mga, mga, sana ganun, ano? How I wish ganun ako dati. But that's my past. Are you aiming for that? God bless you. If you hit it, praise God. What if you don't? Sasabihin ikaw as parent, sasabihin mo ba sa, sa anak mo? Anak naman, nasira ang bloodline sa'yo. Yung great-grandfather mo, valedictorian. Yung great-grandfather mo, valedictorian. Yung grandfather mo, valedictorian. Gaganunin ba natin yung mga anak natin? Yung pinaka-panganay mong kuya, ibunso ka. E 15 kayo. <laughs> Naputo lang bloodline sa'yo, anak. Di ka man lang naging valedictorian. Ganun ba tayo? Is that how we see the worth of people? Or do we see their worth and their purpose because God, we know God has a calling for them? Amen? Jeremiah understood who he was. He is formed, he is known, he is consecrated and appointed by God. And because of that acceptance, eventually, who he is determined what he will do. Jeremiah is called to be a prophet. You and I are also called to have a message, to speak the word of God, the kingdom of God, the gospel. But here's the thing. Kahit alam natin na may calling tayo kay God, minsan may para rin tayo si Jeremiah. Sabi ni Jeremiah kay God, Lord, I don't know how to speak. For I am only a youth. Bata pa ako, Lord. Hindi ko kaya yung pinapagawa mo sa akin. May mga excuses tayo because we understand our inadequacies. And maaring sa mga young people, Lord, napakabata ko pa para mag-make disciples. Napakabata ko pa pa to share the gospel. Napakabata ko pa. Maaring for us, for others, Lord, napaka, napakatanda ko na. I am too old. Maaring yung iba, Lord, I'm just too weak. Lord, I'm not tall enough. Lord, I'm not short enough. Lord, I'm not thin enough. I'm not wide enough. Ano yung mga excuses natin? I'm not strong enough. Wala akong six packs. Wala akong, alam mo yun? Wala akong education. Hindi ako katulad ng kaibigan ko, na, kaya may, may confidence yan, Lord, kasi nag-graduate ng ganito. Nag-graduate sa ganito. Di ba? Ako, Lord, wala akong ganyang resume. But God is saying, it is not about what you can do and what you cannot do. It is about God who will uphold your calling. There are inadequacies, inexperiences. What is your excuse? And guys, it could be that your excuse and my excuse is valid. Hindi ibig sabihin na hindi siya valid. It could be it's valid. Pero ito yung sabi ni God kay Jeremiah. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth. Parang sinasabi sa atin ni God, irrelevant ang excuse mo. Lord, you've called me to honor you. You've called me to follow you. You've called me to, to speak, to preach the gospel. You've called me to advance your kingdom. But my family is not, no, no one and nothing. It doesn't matter, says the Lord. Because to all whom I send you, you shall go and to whatever, whatever I command you, you shall speak. What matters is this, you understand. God has sent you. God has called you. You have a worth and you have a purpose because God formed you. He is personal with you. You are valuable. You are loved by God. And even if people don't believe, it's okay. Jeremiah preached his heart out. 40 years. And not a lot of people believed. Not a lot of people believed. When you look at his ministry, you might say it's a failure, but see, your limitation and my limitation, it does not limit God's purpose in our lives. 
it cannot limit God's purpose in our lives. What if you were born with a deformity? Paano kung pinanganak ka na pag tinignan mo in the natural, parang grabe, ano kayo maging buhay ng batang to? Parang kahit anong tulong ang makukuha niya, parang wala, walang mangyayari sa kanya. Yan ang story ni Nick. Kilala niyo si Nick, di ba? He was born with a deformity. It was called a Tetra Amelia Syndrome na wala siyang lahat, wala. Walang kamay, walang paa, walang braso. But here's the thing. Nick was born in a Christian family. And as he was growing up, kahit siya mismo, wala siyang makitang purpose sa buhay niya. At 10 years old, he wanted to die. He wanted to commit suicide. Alam niyo kung paano niya gagawin? Pupunuin niya yung bathtub ng tubig at pupunta siya doon. Kasi once he's there, hindi na siya makaka. Hindi na siya makakaalis. He did not believe in himself, but here's the thing. His parents believed that he is not worthless. Parents, you have, I pray that you would understand the gravity of your influence. And I pray that the, mouth, the words that comes from our mouth will be one of life instead of death. Sana hindi lumalabas sa bibig natin na wala kang kwenta. Bakit di ka maging katulad ng kapatid mo? Eh kung naging katulad niya ng kapatid niya, hindi na siya yan. Tama? Iba siya. Okay? You have to understand parents. I mean, kung ikaw ang parent nito, siya sa umpisa nagtanong din sila, ano, Lord, bakit mo ginawa sa amin to? Ano ang magiging buhay ng anak ko? Ten years old, because of bullying, self-pity, he wanted to kill himself. But praise God that he did not. And later on, he found his purpose in God. And here's what he said. I thank God that he didn't answer my prayer when I was begging him for arms and legs at age eight. Because guess what? I have no arms, no legs, and he's using me all around the world. We've seen so far approximately 200,000 souls come to Jesus Christ for the very first time in the last six or seven years. He understood he has a calling from God. Sino sa inyo? Can you raise your hands? Raise your arms. Wow. Indulge me, indulge me. Okay. Ayokong iparish yung paan nyo. But what, here's what I'm saying. You have a purpose no matter what the difficulties are. Whatever the limitation Hindi ako ganun ka talino. Hindi ako ganun ka mag- kagaling magsalita ng English, magsalita ng Tagalog. Ang alam ko lang ang sa imo. It doesn't ma- Guys, God's purpose will stand. Amen? And so, God wants us to be blessed. Kaya kahit si Nick, he was blessed with a wife. Blessed with a child. And another child. And more. Rabi, no? Single men. Kapit lang. <laughs> diba? Single men. Taas kamay. O yun. Diba? Man. Tapos sasabihin nyo, yung buhay ko. Guys, it's not about what Nick can do. It's not about what Nick cannot do. It's what about God can do. Amen? I just hope people will see that if God can do something beautiful with my broken pieces, then God truly has a plan for each and every one of us. Wow. I could end the preaching right here. I mean, we could go home and say, God is good. Amen? But there's more because as we, as we even step out in God's purpose, guess what? Meron talagang mga challenges yan. Meron talaga mga problemang darating. At minsan, 
they will overwhelm us. But here's what God said to Jeremiah. Do not be afraid of them. Do not be afraid of the opposition. For I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Jeremiah has good reasons to be afraid. Una, bata pa siya. At ang mga kakausapin niya are not just anyone but the leaders of the land as well. Pangalawa, ang mensahe niya hindi madaling matanggap. Kasi ang mensahe niya sa bansa niya at that time is this. You are sinning against God. Kahit prosperous sila, gusto niyang sabihin sa mga tao, you are sinning against God. Bumalik kayo kay God. At pinsan sasabihin natin, hindi naman ganun kah- kahirap yan ah. Really, the first time you, you heard the gospel? Ako, the first time I hear, heard the gospel, hindi ko siya tinanggap. I think more than five times, ganun katika sa ulo ko, na narinig ko yung gospel bago ko siya tinanggap. And today, ang mga tao kasi ganito, tayo ganito, alam natin makasalanan tayo, tama? Meron ba dito, hindi nakakalam na makasalanan ka? Alam natin, ang problema is this, pag sinabihan na tayong makasalanan tayo, umaalma na tayo. Makasalanan ka, oo, alam ko. Uy, alam mo makasalanan ka, ano ka? Makasalanan ka, oo, alam ko. Actually, alam ko nga yung problema ko eh. Anong problema mo? Uh, medyo nagsisunung, nagsisunungaling ako eh. Ah, so sinungaling ka? Hindi naman. Hindi naman ganun. Nagsisinungaling lang. So sinungaling ka? Hindi. Di ba? Alam ko naman yung problema ko. Medyo chick boy ako. Kahit may asawa na ako, medyo, alam mo yun, nagpa-flirt-flirt pa ako sa iba. Ah, so adulterer ka? Hindi ganun. Umaalma tayo. Ganun din kay Jeremiah. And the people that God is sending you to, Ganun din sila. Aalma din sila. But see, it's not about ano ba yung magiging reaction nila. It's about this. Are you going to fulfill God's purpose in your life? Are you going to fulfill God's purpose in your life? I am with you because whatever I can't, whatever challenges, they will be drowned by the presence of God in your life. Ganun si God. No, God has a purpose for us. Pero buti pa si Jeremiah, clear yung purpose niya. Pumunta ka, maging propeta ka. Paano tayo? How do we know our purpose? Ikaw, isudyante ka. Ano yung purpose mo sa buhay? Ano kaya, ka mag, ano kaya magiging ka? Ano, mag, ano kaya magiging? What will you be in the future? What is your calling? Ika nga? Kasi si, si Jeremiah, clear naman ang purpose to have a message, to speak the message of God. At yung calling is to be a prophet. Ikaw kaya isudyante. Pag binasa mo ba yung Bible, sasabihin sa'yo, Rev, oh, maging chef ka. Wala, di ba? Pag binasa mo ba yung Bible, sasabihin sa'yo kung ano yung course na kukunin mo. Sino yung asawahin mo? Rev, dapat ang asawahin mo maputi, singkit, walang ganon. Ganito ang, ang background, ganito ang apelido, walang ganon. There are some things in our lives that when you look at the Bible, it's not clear. But there are some things that are very, very clear because God wanted Jeremiah to fulfill his purpose so God wants him to be equipped and God wants to direct Jeremiah. Kaya sabi niya, the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Nung binabasa ko to, sabi ko, Lord, sa, kung ako sigur sa Jeremiah, mas gugusin ko, behold, I have put my power in your mouth or in your hand. Alam mo yung pag naglalakad ka tapos may ano may, may sakit, pag hinawakan mo lang shh. 'Di ba pumunta ka doon sa St. Luke's? Tapos pupunta ka lang sa Ayla, ganun ka lang shh. <laughs> diba, pupunta ka sa PGH, sa Makati Med, power. 'Di ba? Mas makikinig sila, 'di ba? 'Di ba? Parang feeling ko lang. Eto lang, ibaban ka na mga hospital. Ba, wag papasukin yan dito. Lugi tayo. Pero bakit word? Because the word is, the word of God is the one that directs us. Remember what I said a while ago? The word of the Lord came to me. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4. Now the word of the Lord is in my mouth. It is the power that will change our lives. 
It is the power actually that will keep us going even if we don't see the miracles because the word of the Lord is the truth that we live by. God's word will direct you toward God's purpose. And minsan, pupunta tayo sa isang ano, na sa crossroads tayo at tatangin natin, God, Lord, saan mo ako dinadala rito? And it's hard for us to hear the, the word of God, to hear the voice of God. You know why? Because prior to that, hindi tayo nakikinig kay God. Prior to that, dito lang tayo humingi ng direction kay God. Lord, na, nasa crossroads na ako. Crisis time. Ano ang gagawin ko? Hindi mo narinig si God. Bakit? Kasi dati, ang clear ng word ni God, hindi mo pinapakinggan. Minsan, I asked myself before, God, what's your purpose for me? And then when I read the word of God, what's the will of God for me when I read the word of God? There are so many things there that's clear kung ano yung will ni God. Siyempre, hindi clear kung ano magiging course mo. Wala dun. Pero kung alam mo, kung ginagawa mo na ang mga clear, darating ang time. Dun sa mga unclear, you are familiar with the voice of God. So I'll give you three examples of the clear things that God wants us to do. Clear. Seek first the kingdom and His righteousness. Clear? Do we do it? Or are we seeking something else? Tapos pagdating mo dun, because you're not seeking God, Lord, anong gagawin ko? Bakit ni mo ako binibigyan ng direction? Dahil hindi ka nakinig sa mga clear. Another thing that's clear, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, and f- for this is what? God's will. Do you pray? Do you give thanks in all circumstances? Or do we pick and choose? Lord, thank you na promote ako. Okay? Tapos na-promote din yung kalaban mo. Lord, ba't mo naman pinomote siya? <laughs> Lord, praise God, nakabili na ako ng kotse. Eh, yung kapitbahay mo, ayaw mo, nakabili ng kotse. Lord, di ba? Do we do that? Or do we pick and choose? Eto pa isa sa mga clear. Okay? Sobrang clear nito. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid Sexual immorality. So if you are married and you see someone else, you don't pray this prayer, Lord, please direct me kung ano yung gagawin ko. Because it's already clear. Husbands, wives, pag merong dumating dyan na iba, Hindi mo na isipin, Lord, bakit mo siya dinala sa akin? Bakit mo kami pinagtagpo? Oh. Bakit isa lang ang puso ko? <laughs> Clear. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans, who do not know God. Do you know your God? Do you want that in every stages of your life, you can hear God clearly? Then do what is clear. Amen? Marami pa po. Ang dami pa sa Bible. Kaya yung iba sa atin, ayaw nang buksan eh. Bakit? Masyadong clear. <laughs> Di ba? Masyadong clear si God. Lord, masyadong kang clear. Even if people are saying, you know, be who you are. What you feel inside should dictate who you are. It is clear. It is clear. God has made you a man and you are a man. God has made you a woman and you are a woman. It is clear. And my prayer is this. If you're married, you stay faithful. If you're single, you avoid sexual immorality. Amen? Clear po yun. Kaya, I, alam ko, I, I know the reality of the struggle. I, 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 I hear people, you know, but my hope is this, do what's clear. 
And when the time comes, even those that are not clear, you will be able to hear God's word. I have set you, as we continue, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The purpose of God in your life will affect people, will have an impact, not just to people around you, but even to communities, to society, even in cities, even in this nation. We always cry out, Lord, let your righteousness fall on this nation. Are the people of God living in righteousness? Lord, I pray that this nation will change for the better. Is the people of God the person sitting next to you? We are supposed to lead in the change that we want to happen. Amen? God has set you. God's purpose will not be shaken or will not be thwarted in your life. Whatever limitations or inadequacies that Jeremiah had, God assured him, affirmed the purpose, secured his purpose, sustained his purpose, because it's not about his limitations. It's about the limitless God that he serves. But what if I messed up God's purpose? Just like me, when I was young, I messed up God's purpose big time. What if just like me, you have been deceived by the enemy, deceived by the devil, stealing your purpose? Anong gagawin mo? Are we going to give up? What if nakita mo sa, ma- sa anak mo na parang Lord, yung purpose mo parang hindi nangyayari dito ah. Parang iba, iba talaga yung landas niya. Anong gagawin natin bilang magulang? Are we just going to say, oh di bahala siya sa buhay niya? Ganun ba yun? Sasabihin ba natin sa kanya na mula ngayon, wala na akong anak at wala ka na ama. Sa TV lang po okay yun. Drama lang yan. Sa totoong buhay, let us not give up on the next generation. Amen. But minsan, it's not the next generation yung pasaway. It's the older generation. It's the older ones also. So young people, don't give up on us as well. Because even if the enemy has deceived us, our God is greater than our blunders. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, God is greater than your mistakes. Yung iba sabi niyo sa kanil, God is greater than your sleep. Malapit na yung matapos. Gising na! John 10.10 10 said, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come, and I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Grabe si God. Ano minsan, takot na takot tayo mag-step sa purpose ni God kasi Lord, alam mo yun, baka, anong, baka mawala business ko. Anong gusto ni God sa'yo? An abundant life. Ayoko mag-step up sa purpose niya kasi Lord, baka kailangan kong iwan yung girlfriend ko, yung boyfriend ko. Lord, ayoko mag-step out sa purpose, sa purpose mo kasi baka kailangan kong i-forgive itong taong napakasalbahe sa akin. But if you step in God's purpose, what's waiting for you is life to the full. Because God's Grace and mercy is greater than your mistakes. Amen? What do you do if you mess it up? You return to the Lord. Because only Jesus can realign you to God's purpose. And so as we end this series, I want to remind us, this is who we are. This is who you are. This is who you are. This is who you are. Okay? This is who you are. Okay? You are formed through God's pleasure. You are known in God's love. You are consecrated by God's glory. You are appointed for God's purpose. As we end the series of No Filter, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Sige, sige. Kasi yung ibang nagising, parang ha, ang tagal naman, sabi, mag-end na. Okay. 
Ito na, mag-i-end na tayo. As we end this series of No Filter, here's the truth. Ito lang yung truth. We cannot live a life without filter. Meron at meron yan. But, I want to propose to you that the only filter worth having is God's love revealed in God's Word. Amen? Lord, we thank you for God, ikaw po yung nauna sa no filter. You know us with no filter. But you love us as well with no filter. Grabe po kayo, Panginoon. And our prayer is this, that the next generation, we will see them as you see them. That they are not inadequate. That they are not wasted, Lord God. But they are going to be men and women who will fulfill God's purpose in their lives. Help us, the older generations, to speak life and truth and identity and meaning and significance to the next generation. And for those of us, Lord, who have messed up your purpose, we take this time to repent, to run to to Christ, to be realigned, to ask for help. We cannot do this alone. Panginoon, let your name be honored. Let your name be glorified. You are the only one worth living for. And may our lives continue to speak of the gospel, to demonstrate the gospel, to advance the kingdom because it's all about you. Let us build our lives around the source of our identity and purpose. God, no one else. In Jesus' name, amen.